Portland uh, Police Bureau, multiple sheriff's departments working on this case. And yet, nobody is using that term yet, serial killer. But I've been through this before. This is the way it always starts. Nobody says it until they say it. So I want to bring in Alex Capriello, our News Nation uh, correspondent on the case. What are police exactly saying about this, Alex? It seems awfully suspicious when you have six found in three months, all in that small area. Yeah, for a while we were seeing them take the steps forward and in investigating these cases, but never actually bring them together as one. Just recently, they drew a hard line in the sand saying, hey, we have no facts, no evidence to support the claims that this is a serial killer. But I think you're absolutely right, Ashley. It's completely fair to say, right? There are six women that are now dead, all within about a 50-mile radius from Portland. There's a lot of fear, anxiety that's going on in this greater Portland area. They want answers. They want to know what exactly is happening up there. But at this point, only one of those women have a confirmed cause of death from law enforcement and from the medical examiner. As you mentioned, Joanna Speaks, she's the victim who they say was killed, murdered by homicide, blunt force head, uh, blunt force trauma to the head and to the neck. The rest of these, we still don't know, many of them still being labeled suspicious. So are there any other pattern stories that at least they're releasing? Are they keeping this all close to the vest? Or is it basically they just don't know? I just don't think that they know right now, not enough to actually draw a comparison or a pattern to them. We do know at least three of these cases, right? Joanna, uh, Ashley Real, Charity. Uh, Charity Perry and Bridget Webster, they have labeled these as suspicious, right? Many of these women's bodies are being found in wooded areas, rural areas. One of the bodies was found by a fisherman. Uh, he called 911, said it was in a deeply wooded area. So certainly enough uh, reason for people to draw conclusions on their own and feel that sense of anxiety uh, surrounding all of these women. But right now, no obvious links other than the fact that these are all women within their 20s to 30s, many of them found in rural, remote areas. Yeah, all of that says suspicious to me. Uh, I don't know why not all six would be obviously found, you know, out in the woods, etc. suspicious. But multiple law enforcement agencies say they're all sharing, like the Portland Police Bureau, the multiple sheriff's departments. They say they're all sharing, but there's no one single tip line at this point. So anybody who might have any information, they kind of have to go to the, what, the, the, the detachment that's closest to them? I mean, it doesn't sound like it's very streamlined. Yeah, and I think that's a huge problem that needs fixing, right? Usually when we see these types of cases pop up, like say the FBI gets involved, FBI launches their own tip line, and it's all one coordinated effort. But right now we're seeing multiple agencies, whether they're police departments or local sheriff's departments, that are all sort of treating this sort of uh, isolated, and they're handling their own case. Like, for example, the Portland Police Bureau, uh, in their statement, says, hey, we're not even commenting on three of these cases. We're not going to speculate or talk about it because it's just not in our jurisdiction. And to me, that's a bit of a problem, right? They do say that they're sharing um, sort of information and evidence that they find. They're communicating with each other. But at the same time, they're asking for the public's help to come forward, share information and share facts if they knew any of these victims. But how are these people going to come forward if there's not one exact tip line? So right now, what we are seeing is sort of an isolated effort among all these different law enforcement agencies. But still, Portland Police Bureau saying no evidence to support the claim of a serial killer. Seems to me that was a problem in the Golden State Killer as well, that there wasn't a lot of sharing of information. They could have probably found that guy faster if there had been, you know, a better system. But, you know, that was, that was 40 years ago. Now we have all sorts of platforms to be able to share. Um, keep us posted on that, Alex Capriola. Really uh, perplexing stuff. Thank you for the report live. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.